creates love and compassion peptides. These peptides flow down to every cell in the body and they begin to attach to receptors. And the cell begins to take on the attributes of the peptides. So much so that if the cells die, when they replicate, they replicate with more receptors for loving, compassionate thoughts. You are literally beginning to change who you are with the thoughts that you have. That's a benevolent dictator. One that's not so benevolent is one that has negative thoughts, hatred and anger and frustration, which creates those peptides which go down to the cells and attach to the receptors. And the cell begins to grow more receptors to take on these peptides. And when the cell replaces itself, it replaces itself with many more receptors for those negative peptides. You see why it's important to change our perception of who we are and the environment we live in. We are literally every day with your thoughts creating who you are. We've all learned to are what we think. Literally, it's change. The cells are very efficient. Each one of them has a specified task for the tribe that it belongs to. Left to its own devices, the liver tribe will function as best as they can. That is what they do. But we can interfere with the mind. So yoga understands this and says that we are a microcosm and a macrocosm and as the whole universe is full of planets, stars, black holes, so are we. It's just on an atomic level, on a cellular level. You know what atoms are? A nucleus with electrons flying around? Does that remind you of a solar system? So we literally begin to understand who we are. Are we getting closer? Any questions? And I have done this right down. I mean, if you start learning about cells, their functions are so complicated you can spend a lifetime understanding the workings of cells. We spoke a little bit about how they take in oxygen and glucose and create energy and byproduct of water and how perfect that is and how we can mess that function up by not breathing correctly and then they have to use a system of fermentation which is 36 times less efficient and creates a lot more toxins. And so you understand the funny arm is very important. The way we work our bodies is very important. More important, what is our intention and what are we thinking while we do our yoga practice? becomes all important. It can be quite a seemingly minor looking practice, full of intention and mind, and such is a very powerful practice. Or it can be looking a very spectacular practice with its no mind, no content, and it's what we call an empty practice. This is why it shouldn't matter what someone's doing next to you. Your journey is private, unique, and our fingerprints. That's how different our practice should be. Everyone's practice should be unique to that time. Okay. So the implications are we should provide what? For ourselves. So what was the question? Yeah. What? What is tribes with these cells like? What happens when people are in tribes? What happens? What tends to happen? Wars. <laughs> cells are more intelligent than humans. They very rarely war on each other. They need nourishment. They need nourishment, but they tend to fragment. They need leadership. They need leadership. I'm always going on about your conscious mind, your conscious awareness. They need leadership. They need benevolent leadership. If it's left to their own devices, each tribe will look after its own interests, maybe to the detriment of the interests of another tribe.
So is asana enough for erection? Which is why we have tapas, which is why we have shakkars, which is why we have cleansing practices to help. Which is why we have yama practices. Singing. Why would singing work? How does singing come into this? What does everything in the universe do? Vibrate. 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 It has a resonance. 